Hello there, this is Hans Forschner with Napkin Engineering. This video focuses on the highlights of SoundPlan Essential version 3 uh, to compare it to version 2 and uh, kind of see what are the primary changes that uh, version 3 is bringing over version 2. So the first one I want to go over is uh, from the SoundPlan Essential over the editor. Uh, here's a uh, small uh, training project. Let me show you very quick uh, what it entitles. So we have uh, road sources. These are the red lines. So here we have like an elementary school with uh, point sources on top of the roof uh, representing the HVAC uh, system, also a wall-mounted HVAC system, the area source uh, representing for the playground. We have receiver location, the free field receiver location right here, uh, right here at the property line, and then also the community. Uh, we have a barrier going all around the perimeter. We have buildings. Uh, on some of the buildings we have receptors. That's the circles uh, with the hash. And uh, we have a berm here, a barrier, a mitigation area, like a little forest area right here in the yellow. And um, again, we have the uh, road uh, sections, and that's basically to represent the drop-off um, of kids uh, at the school. Uh, let me show you that in a 3D map. So here we have a 3D map of the entire area. Uh, we can rotate that so we can get a better idea of the location here. All right. So let me go back to the sitemap view. Uh, so one of the changes uh, of version 3 is uh, show area fillings. So here we can highlight uh, the buildings, any area objects, uh, color code them. And uh, this color coding is basically done uh, under the options object types. So here we can define, uh, for example, for the area sources, let's see area sources right here. We can define uh, what the fill color is. Uh, also, in terms of the 3D view, uh, there is also the selection for the 3D view colors. Uh, that's not only for area source, also for point sources, um, or line sources, um, buildings. So here we have uh, kind of like the color selection in terms of the 3D view. All right. So again, if we change in the 3D map, here we have the color selections. All right, um, so let me turn that off. Um, in terms of the uh, source inputs, uh, let me show you in terms of source inputs, uh, there is a big change uh, because now uh, SoundCloud Essential has a library, a reference library for the sources. So before we only had the spectrum here and it basically was a table input. Now we have, you know, we click on the spectrum we have a emission or source library, which is separated in a system library. The system library is uh, the library that comes with the software. There is a global library. The global library is uh, located on your system. Here we have a path in terms of my username, documents, sound plan essential free, globe data, li uh, libraries, emission. Uh, so that's an absolute uh, database. And we can uh, move uh, project information into your global data. So if we go to global data, and I go, for example, to this uh, element here, we can right-click and copy uh, the data into your global library. We can also copy an element into the same project. At that point, it will ask us, do you want to rename? Uh, because it doesn't allow two elements to be named the same. So you would uh, change the name for the copied element. In terms of the uh, elements in the library, we have a general, uh, a general tab where we can define a uh, comment down here where the data came from. So if we have different information for different uh, source elements, so we can uh, describe them and uh, document them for future projects or if you put them in the global data where so you can know later on where the data in that element, uh, in the global element library comes from. Um, we have values, uh, so here we have uh, octave, a selection of octave or third octave. We can define the lower and upper boundary in the frequency bands. 
we can define a weighting and this a weighting basically shows you uh, the uh, this uh, row the blue uh, highlighted the uh, low row and you can do different weightings and changing the weightings and see kind of the spectrum a weighted c weighted b weighted what is the total sum so here we have the summation uh, level and then you can see the difference between the linear spectrum and the A-weighted spectrum. Then we also have uh, a definition of unit, meet, and level. The unit is the sound power for the entire source. Uh, the meter definition is the sound power defined as intensity per line meter per square meter of an area source or line source. And the level definition is actually a specific definition uh, let me go to this element down here where we have the level definition. So what this allows us, uh, if we have uh, a sound pressure level at a certain distance of a source, uh, we can put that into the library. And then here with a right click, we can go, uh, we can copy. Uh, this is a copy and paste to Excel, for example. So we can copy information to Excel and then back from Excel into the library. We can do edit sum where we can adjust the spectrum uh, total level and then here we have also the convert sound pressure to sound power function. What this function will do is allow us to use uh, four principal uh, surface types um, to, uh, that we can use to calculate the pressure level from pressure level to a sound power level. So a typical uh, is a box shape um, measurement uh, surface so you have your piece of equipment, uh, you're maybe one meter or 0.9 meters or three feet away from the source. And the source is maybe three meters long, a meter wide, and maybe one and a half meters high. So that's a five foot by three foot by 10 foot source. And with that, we would have a correction of 17 decibels from pressure to sound power level. So we can do that, and when we apply that, the 75 decibels goes up to 92 decibels, and then the program will automatically adjust and add additional comments into the comment section to uh, show that this sum power estimation was based on a um, hemispherical cube, and that is on the ground, and uh, a 17 decibel correction was applied. So we can use that. We can change, uh, post the change, and uh, we can accept that. By accepting it, this element, we assign this ex element to whatever source we call this from. If we want to change that, so here we have, again, the spectrum, and we can go back to, this is, for example, HVAC1. So we change that back to the original spectrum. Now, this is, again, always a reference spectrum. The actual sound power level is defined right here. <clears throat> and again, here the sound power in the daytime or nighttime period. So this is one of the ch bigger changes in version 3 is the library. Uh, we talked about the uh, definition of unit meter level and also the uh, calculation from sound pressure level to sound power level. Another big change <clears throat> in this uh, version 3 is that you can apply or uh, set a point source directly on a building. So if I have a point source input defined, uh, you can go right to the building, and then the program will recognize that it's right next to the building. It will uh, allow you to position the source in the distance uh, to the wall, to the beginning of the wall. So this is a, a source that was, uh, uh, the building was put in counterclockwise. So here we can say it's five meter from that left corner, and it is maybe three meters above the ground and we want to put it uh, 0 0.01, so that's one centimeters in front of the facade. So we click OK, and it put the receiver, uh, the source, right here. <clears throat> and then again, we can define and make the changes to the name of the source, the spectrum, the sound power level, and then here we have the source already put in here. So we can delete this one. So I select that and uh, delete it. And then here are all the other sources that are here, either on the rooftop or on the wall here. Uh, we can do the same thing for area source. So if I put area source right here, the big difference between a point and area, we can define the complete facade as a source. And then it 
automatically takes the uh, edges of that facade for the source definition. So we'll click OK. And then here we have the entire facade defined. We can say, OK, this is a wall uh, radiating noise from inside. <clears throat> so here we can uh, define, uh, let's say, an interior, um, whatever, music room. And uh, we know a certain transmission loss. And then we could apply, for example, a certain sound power level per square meter of that area source, so an intensity maybe in the order of 40 decibels for that entire area source. All right. So let me uh, show that in 3D. So here we have a 3D map. So here we can see this entire building of building facade as an area source. All right. Uh, next. Uh, change um, in terms of um, version 3. Um, we can uh, make a rotation so we can uh, select objects and uh, we see this little diamond when the object is selected and then when you hit the control button and then go on to that diamond um, you have this rotation option so we can rotate an object. If you do it with multiple objects you can rotate multiple objects all right um, in the same way control delete and we delete multiple objects uh, last uh, option that we want uh, or a couple of more things here and the calculation settings there's a few things that have changed uh, the, probably the most interesting is the number of threads now Sound Plan Essential allows uh, the calculation of multiple threads. So if your computer has four or eight uh, threads or CPUs, uh, the program will automatically activate all of them for the calculation. Typically I uh, s count down one thread. So in this case, like three, I have a four core system here. With three, I can uh, use 75% uh, of the uh, CPUs on the system. And I still have one CPU for doing any other work, uh, like word uh, processing or any kind of spreadsheet work, uh, so that the program is not completely taking all the CPU for the calculation. Um, so that um, kind of ends my my uh, video here in terms of the highlights of uh, version three. Again. Uh, the biggest highlights are the uh, library, the reference library, the multi-threading, uh, some of the object uh, definition in terms of the coloring and the object types, and then also the selecting and fill area. So here again, show area filling um, to highlight kind of some of the area elements. Thank you for listening and uh, watching the video. Have a good day.